Welcome. This is a June 5th open ZFS production user call. We have Rod, Andrew, Stu, Daniel, and myself so far. And thank you, Antrenig, for hosting last week. It was during BSD CAN and the calls were informal, but I dropped in a few times. Uh, Rodney, you have questions about ZFS metadata performance. It sounds like you might be running into something. Yeah, I'm running a find, find dot dash foobar print. So you're just printing to the path name of the file, to me, seems to be a very slow operation on ZFS. Are we talking SSD or spinning rust or something else? Um, Spinning rust, 50, let's see, it's RAID Z2, um, five spindles, five 16 terabyte spindles with two NVMe drives, Acting as Zill and Cache, I think. So, so you don't you don't have special as as NVMe, like a special metadata class. Yeah, I would definitely want that with C RAID C two. Oh, that's a nice luxury, but people are saying we want. Uh, like triple mirror just for safety because if you lose those devices, you lose your pool like the good old days with slog. So that, or just, yeah, slog, just thinking out loud. And Thanks. welcome, Richard. Okay. Well, that's, it, that's, I don't think that's any different than if you lose welcome, two, two drives out of your RAID Z2. This thing. is true. I mean, uh, if, if you put your, I guess this is a new thing that I don't know very much about what the the metadata thingy is with. Uh, who wants to give a rundown on it? I can if you like. Uh, yeah. Well, I think you would want to have at least the same degree of redundancy on your metadata that you have on your normal pool. That's a good point. Okay. Uh, I mean, a pair of. I mean, a pair of the the risk is a little is a little bit lower if you're if you're running a if you're running a Rust pool and then you have some NVMEs. The failure state of the NVMEs is probably going to leave it reading, so you're probably never going to be locked out, and you're not doing. I mean, you're doing lots of lots of little writes and stuff, but you know, if you if you give plenty of headroom for for special. I think that the, I mean, the, the risk versus the reward, I think is is easily well worth it. And you can always add a third later if you want to. Um, but points. unless you're, yeah. Sorry. Right. Let's give Rodney a crash course on the special allocation classes in general. I, I can try my best if you don't have one, or I bet you have a good one. Oh, and Daniel, have you used them in practice? Maybe. I only use them in practice. I okay. don't use Tell us about I don't use special them. allocation classes, if you will. Thank you. And welcome, uh, Dan and Richard. Yeah, it's so it's just it's just it's just metadata. So it's uh, you know it, it's it's semi but not completely portable. But any any new anything you write onto Rust, um, the data will go there. But the special allocation. Uh, Class. So, you know, just like you're, you know, set up the same way as your slug or whatever, it has to be a mirror and it's your, it's your metadata. So that means that all of your file lists, your finds, your ZFS lists, all of that stuff will act like an NVMe. So for the, from the user perspective, it feels like an NVMe, but then the data is of course written across your RAID Z. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I I only I almost don't think that risk is even uh uh I I just I just don't think it's risky because we're dealing with a different type of failure uh, situation that you would have on Flash anyway, and yeah if you have a petabyte I would do it triple but if you don't have a petabyte I mean it's a it's a it's a SSD mirror I mean yeah is have we met it I mean I guess it's possible like you might want to use different brands or off the shelf at different times or something like that. But I mean, the risk is just just very, very low for an insane amount of comfort for the for the yeah. operator. 
Okay, the scenario is there are three NVMe drives there, but I believe those NVMe drives are being used for, for SLOG and L2 ARC. Would I probably be better off using those NVMe drives for metadata? That depends if on your workload. Got, yeah, but if you have, I mean, if your memory is not maxed out, then, I mean, L2 ARC, I don't think that's that's doing you massive amounts of favors, um, unless you're really, if you're really memory starved. Um, yeah, I would, I would, I would even do it over. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess log could be, I mean, you might, you might need that if you, you run, you run VMs, right? So, well, no, how this right, is, yeah, this how right is, heavy is your use case? Um, this is a, uh, CI back end system. Let me think, does it actually run any? I do not believe none of the, um none of the test vms run on that machine so is what it's running is uh a software package called bamboo which i th think is just a boatload of java and all of the artifacts from the ci runs end up stored in this big giant 70 terabyte pool yeah so I mean, I, I think you would. You, you, this this is worth playing with. I think you'll have a you'll have a great time with it. I mean, but the downside is your machine's already set up, so it's only going to be because it's copy on write. Only the new metadata is going to get onto your your special your special mirror. So well, no, you know, actually, actually next next run month, next month. The machine is one of the reasons I'm bringing this up. One of the reasons I even went and looked at this machine is the machine is being replaced and upgraded, and the pool will be migrated. So we have a chance to correct any wrongs in the way that the pool's been designed. Yeah, give it's yourself going plenty on to of... all new hardware next month. Yeah, I, I mean, I hate working on the server with without a, 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 a rust system without special it's hmm. it's really it's just it's just a it's just a delight to do a zfs list and you get all of your <laughs> you get all of your stuff in a second rather well, than I, 10 seconds i aborted a a fine max depth i think seven seven or eight after four hours oh my god yeah 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 rodney two quick and the, points and, the, and the depth is more probably more like 20. so rodney two quick points one you can tell the special allocation class disk is what they they call it because i believe there can be more than metadata you can also set it to hold small files uh dan what you got there you've got craft bears maybe okay thank you it's Daniel. it's, it's based on block size so that's a little fiddly but yeah you can do it uh, yeah i don't doubt it's fiddly but if you happen to have a use case with lots of little files that don't take up much space you can you know get the record size right and just say hey put them on the all flash whereas say video no, files sit on the, the the bulk storage that's one possibility um another is be super clear that it's all metadata it's not just something in arc or l2 arc that's read recently so it's actually the everything possible and if, if you do a whole lot of analysis key point rather than just accessing something recent then yeah it might be a really good payoff another observation is most modern ssds are way bigger than was ever really envisioned for slogs and even l2 arc so a lot of times it's useful to take one of those disks, slice it up and use it for multiple things. Well, it's, it's already currently there. It's already slicing those to be slog and L2R. It's already done that. They're part oh, interesting. into two separate pieces. So when since we were talking about safety, so slog is, is chewing up your right endurance. So I don't know if I'd share that with my special. So just just from I, I know I'm the one that so was like how do I find out more about this special or whatever you're calling it? How do I create a 
array that has that in it. What do I do to Z, Z pull Z pull add uh full full name special mirror uh device one device two. It's literally the word special. Um let me see where the man page is. Probably in um uh, pull create I would bet. It's a relatively recent feature such that, yes, I, I've never used one in practice. Da Daniel, it's great that to just, hear that you've done that. What you did there just adds a mirror. That doesn't do anything. Oh, to... There's special, oh, sorry. Special, mirror, special mirror. The, 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 the word it's special in mirror. Pool concepts uh, in category seven. Okay. Welcome yeah, on. special mirror, not mirror. So okay. pool name, special mirror. Special mirror, thank like, you. Oh. Like literally special mirror. Yeah. And one word or two? Two. Okay, special mirror, device one, device two? Yep. Okay. Now, I, I seem to recall coming. something about it taking a very long time to list all the snapshots and file systems on, in a Z pool. And I remember something about how to make it faster or something that was done to make that faster. And Alan Jude comes to mind. I'm sure that it was him, him that was talking about that. This should make that a lot faster. Okay. How how big do these devices need to be? To, is there some way to figure out how much metadata is in my pool? I have run out many times, and it's bummer because it then then of course it just acts like the system that that you're on now. For but that wasn't the question, music. Daniel. The question yeah. was: is How do I figure out how much metadata is in my current pool? I have a pool. I know how big it is. How can I find out how big the metadata is so I can properly size this? Probably some cursed uh, ZDB invocation. Um, yeah. So what it does is that you have to really know how much of which uh, allocation class you have. And the next problem is that you can even basically use the DFS data set properties to define which uh, location class something there. should be written into by saying what up to which size it's a small block which counts as metadata. So it's probably not easy to figure out. I've never found a good com command to do that uh, with just one command and it tells you the percentage or whatever. I had this exact conversation with Alan two years ago. Um, no. And he said no. Well, he said no. There's no. There's not. And and allocate five five percent of your pool size for maximum headroom, but oh, uh, typical okay. use case is about uh, is less than two percent. So That's a start. Five percent of my pool size is what I need for metadata storage. Five percent is is a lot. I mean, if you're taking massive, massive amounts of snapshots. And no, not doing any snapshots. Well, no, wait a minute. Um, doing minimal auto snap, um, so that there's daily, weekly, monthly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, five percent might be might be a ton, but that's the that is the rule of thumb. To oh, I won't run out of it. For this pool would be five percent. Yeah. So thank you, Richard, and, for that menu. Two and a half percent would be pretty doable because that gets me in an in an under under four terabyte size need. If you ever have to reallocate, then then you have to do a send and receive to redistribute the metadata into the special. But, well, that's the reason so, I'm trying see, to find out about yeah. it now is I've got this window coming up next month where we yeah. are going to move this this whole pool is going to get sent and received onto new hardware so um the nice thing is that uh, if it overflows it just degrades and picks the default uh, storage space so it's not like um your ddop device where if it fills up it completely oh wait Can you... no, the it works like a two, but 
How much how much is it gonna hurt performance <clears throat> if I take that NVME meta thing um and mirror it to a piece of spinning rust? Whoa. Oh, oh, uh, hmm. Even Steven with this, it's gonna be yeah, even Steven with the well, well Reed actually might you might yeah. still get the That's reed because it's not I, the right performance I can live with because our our the uh, how frequently we I mean it's CI run so it's yeah at the end of a run I produce a bunch of artifacts and store them and then I'm done that's my right yeah but but um, the problem is that even if you're reading uh, a spinning disk can take ten milliseconds uh, to answer a single read request uh, while a good NVMe drive takes a tenth of a millisecond so that's yeah, a factor 100 in the latency so even the single read queue to the spinning disk uh, totally sets off your IO uh, tape latency but yeah, yeah, but zfs will prioritize the, the faster device if i'm not mistaken yes but you still have if you look at the latency distribution you have basically the two curves added and anytime something is blocked waiting for a read which has already been scheduled to the slow disk, the fast disk can't read anything which depends on that. So if you want to look up where something is stored and that read gets uh, scheduled to the slow disk, you're taking a nap for 10 or 20 milliseconds or more depending on the queue depth. So you lose the, the, um, the latency uh, advantages. Maybe. Rodney, do you have a window enough for experimentation? Fast, Go ahead. Uh, enough will be slow that it probably totally not. Not, not. I I could not, not, I not would, given the fact that it, it takes like two days to move a fifty terabyte pool from spinning rust to spinning rust. I'd be willing to experiment with that. So you're probably better off uh, if you are doing send receive. Uh, do you have to preserve history? Can you bump the block size so that you get a lower metadata ratio? How does the block size change the metadata? Um, because you have to track the location of each block. And then if you have bigger blocks, you have less objects uh, I, in your arc, for example. To track. I don't think that's the metadata that's killing me. The metadata that's killing me is the, is the POSIX metadata. <clears throat> That shouldn't be involved in listing data sets. Not listing data sets when you're running a find. Oh, yeah. OK, well, then. I, I I only have two data sets. So listing data <clears throat> sets is a, is a, is a no, no off. But running a find, there is a, mid, a special location class will help you, because uh, as long as you don't overflow your uh, special allocation class, for the metadata, you know that it will be on the fast flash and not on the spinning disk. So and a good use case, according to what I've read and played around with in my lab is, if you have, want to use D-rate on a big uh, spinning disk pool, you pair it up with uh, medium quality NVMe for the special location class to track all the metadata and a journal. And then even D-rate feels pretty snappy. This is not an endorsement, but I found something on Reddit of, hey, this worked great for finding my metadata size, just saying, with ZDB. And y'all nice. are welcome to try it. Um, what does dash PBBB do? <laughs> Uh -huh. um, P is print numbers in a parsable form, and that is block statistics, block statistics, block statistics. So it's like multiple verbose. It gives you lots of stats. Probably all the stats.
Here's that link. Uh, Richard Santi, any thoughts on this topic? Welcome Thank to the you. call. If you want to do a quick intro, you are welcome to. And it's these are absolutely the questions. What we see in the real world. Sure. Um, is my mic uh, keyed in correctly? Is it? It is perfect. Terrible? Welcome, Santi. And hey, if you'd want to do an intro, that'd be great. And let's uh, hopefully uh, that command in the background and report back in a few minutes. That's there's my <laughs> strategy. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, I actually just ran it on a, on a box I have here, and it, uh, it spit out a whole bunch of really interesting-looking tables. So I'm assuming this is probably very useful. Um, but uh, I'd paste the output up onto the thing, but I think it's probably a little too unwieldy for Zoom chat. Um, right. And if but, it's uh, appropriate, put it right in the doc. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and choose. Oh, sure. I didn't even think. <laughs> yes, that's that would be a good idea. This is your meeting um, doc. Yes. But yeah, um, look at that command now. Great. I guess a bit of an intro. Um, don't know. Um, I'm a Linux nerd since I was a teenager. Uh, got into BSD. I fell in with some bad folks and got into uh, the BSDs a couple of years ago. Uh, and it's been downhill ever since. There you uh, go. <laughs> actually, my introduction to ZFS was funnily enough through my first real job in quotation marks as I'm not painting houses or doing things of that sort of thing, you know, keeping a finger soft. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a uh, part of this uh, horrible backup and zest recovery stack and it was the most reliable part of it. And that was 10 years ago. Uh, oh, goodness. Still. Okay. And that, uh, um, yeah, I was just like, huh, uh, it didn't touch anything else BSD related for a while. Um, what was like ZFS is what are you um, currently good. doing with ZFS. Um, nothing, uh, nothing professionally. Just yeah. uh, uh, well, uh, there's a nice big Hetzner box sitting in Finland, waiting for me to do something interesting with it, um, and then just a home lab environment. Cool. And I'm also a Capricorn. There we go. You're That's Capricorn. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Richard, do you want to introduce yourself while people run those commands and hopefully we event some ballpark percentages before Rodney needs to leave? And you're muted for what it's worth. And no worries if you tie it up. Uh... While Richard works that out, yeah, Mike not be working. We see you unmuted, but not hearing you. Does anyone have a ballpark uh, percentage of metadata based on those commands as you've been racing each other? Still waiting. Okay. Seems to, even on my relatively small spinning rust machine I, that I'm running it on, it takes about five minutes or so to run. Cool. Uh, Richard, are you coming in as cool guy 71 or is that someone else? Either way, welcome, cool guy seventy one. Ah, hmm. I'm tempted to run that too, but I'll probably. Leave. It does give a nice little countdown for for an ETA. Uh, hi, I just wanted to drop in and say that FreeBSD is a super cool project, uh, and it's been very beneficial to me. Uh, and I just want to come in and just uh, give a little moment to give some appreciation to ZFS. Uh, because it's helped me create a lot of snapshots in case they break my system. So yeah, I just want to say that. Cool. How'd you find out about this? About ZFS or FreeBSD? About the calls. No, you showed up on a oh, call. Oh, uh, the FreeBSD okay. Discord server. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, using it personally, professionally, or both? Uh, both. Cool. Great. Um, and are you also Richard, or are you different? <laughs> Richard's struggling with like AirPods. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's I'm not Richard. Okay, cool. Welcome, cool guy. Uh, feel free to listen in, jump in with questions. You can drop questions in the doc. This is, these are really laid back. All right, thanks. Cool. Yeah, totally. Uh, and yeah, Discord. Richard, you still fighting with technology, which I guess we all do 24 7 in some way. You're working with Daniel. Daniel, do you want to tell us about Richard while he 
pushes buttons and clicks thingies. Yeah, Richard started working with me um, just a just a few weeks ago, and he was helping me test out some uh, Zelta buds before my PSD can talk. Um, so I'll let him speak for himself, but uh, yeah, he's a developer with I think seven hundred and forty five years of experience uh in many different languages and has been helping me out with uh, a lot of stuff very cool Matt, my mic may be working now there you are welcome we can hear you I had, I had to uh plug in a mic hi everyone it's great to be here i'm uh yeah i'm new to the scene i um as daniel mentioned working with them and really enamored uh with the whole zfs zfs concept and i've been uh learning about it through the process he described and also just installed free bsd on some hardware i have here with gnome and just kind of you know digging in so uh, nice oh, to be here and richard you're the co-organizer of the new york city ruby call right or oh. ruby meeting meetup right so i my most uh as daniel mentioned i, I we had a lot of software development in my background and um, most recently have been kind of Ruby Rails focused. So I'm one of the co-hosts for the NYC.RB meetup, if anybody's into. It's Zoom based. Uh, it's easy to find us on meetup. Um, we meet second Wednesday of every month. Uh, this month, actually, we're having a uh, shameless plug here. We're having OB Fernandez, who uh, is, you know has a lot of presence in the Rails Ruby world. And he's just written a new book about AI patterns uh, in software development, which is kind of interesting. He'll uh, he'll be talking about that, that uh, the topic. Let's see if I can find the link. Cool. Yeah, it's great to be working with Daniel. He's great. got he's doing some pretty really cool stuff in his company, and uh, you know, so it's, I'm having a lot of fun. Do we have any numbers for Rodney? Just to sort of work in parallel here. Yeah, I, I know I, Rodney, I, you have to leave at some point, right? Oh, Jan, you might have a gist. Perhaps you love jizz. Let's see, copy. If I'm um, so this is a pretty fresh um, ZFS on root install on FreeBSD 14. And the output of that uh, command from that uh, ZDB command from earlier, if I'm reading this table correctly, which, you know, caveat, um, yeah. looks like it's, it says metadata total 6.9%. Or sorry, 6.89, uh, no percentage. I'm assuming it's a percentage. I retract everything I said about 5%. Uh, I didn't <laughs> forgive him. It wasn't me. <laughs> Where's the six point nine? Am I reading that wrong? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. no, sorry, uh, that's not in this output here. Oh, sorry, um, but I'm yeah. wondering if I'm no wondering. retractions allowed. Yeah, that's all. We're etching it in stone. Let's uh, get the tattoo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the output. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah, that, that's why that, my caveat was because of that, because I'm looking at Ooh. the uh, the second to last table, the penultimate mm -hmm. table, um, and it uh, seems to have some issues like with some of the table spacing. Um, but the final one is, uh, sorry, the final entry in that second to last table is metadata total, and then it has percentage total. Okay, yeah, so that one, that 6.89% is a percentage. Uh, oh, on this, the one I just had on screen? Uh, on mine, but yeah, it looks like that. Total yeah. one point seven five percent. So, am I? I'm missing, back in business. What two percent something? was great? Yeah. What? So, if we, we take the average, it's under five percent. So, are we talking? The, <laughs> give me a column. This column, actually, let me throw that into fixed width. Is this what we're talking about? Uh, no. I'm old and me. slow. So, uh, whose is this? And should I keep it or delete it? <laughs> Those are numbers. They are from chat. But that just looks like the output is ePool list. That yeah. yeah, that is. Oh, fine. Uh, Thank you. So not it, what we're after. No. Okay. Uh, then I, those aren't helpful. What, Jan, what you got? Which, what should I look for? We. Look for. Uh, that's one this. part of it. And then there's another table, I think. So, um, Ooh, numbers, numbers, numbers. The question is, what are you writing to your special uh, device? And oh. 
Yeah, obviously, if you use this special small blocks thing, you're going to eat up tons more space. Um, exactly. Because that's... it doesn't know the difference between a file and another block. So you can get into a funny situation where you can, like, accidentally hoover up VMs into it and stuff. But I think you have to enable that per, per a data set. And it can be very tempting, for example, if you have... Uh, a database uh, in a file system that you say, okay, this file system should make you put the eight and 16 kilobyte blocks from Postgres or uh, MySQL. On, I, I, do, um, I do have that. I have a Postgres database in a separate data. It's in a, that's what's in the separate data set. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking 1.75 metadata total. Did I grab the right bit? That's my uh, guess uh, how to interpret that. Okay. But it's only a guess. Well, I have a um, command yeah, could have used Linux now. also support oh, to get okay. structured output and make sense of it in an automation friendly way. Because instead, what we are seeing are supposedly tap uh, indented columns, and it's totally degenerated because yes. the columns <laughs> are too, maybe the cells are too long to fit in the. It's uh, a mess. Visually Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Greg. Uh, that said, uh, Richard, what's your workload look like? To get a three point. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm three. still on Mike. Uh, I have a oh, brand new. This is a brand new free BSD install. So I, it's a zero basically. So ah. I'm just learning stuff. I've done a couple of updates. I have like used the uh, boot environment control a few times, stuff like okay. that. Okay. It just occurred to me that the reason why my percentage might be higher is because it's a percentage out of the total usage, and this thing has, you know, barely anything on it. Not Santi. Okay. Yeah, that uh, but that was the uh, same call. Six point eight nine is what I got on a reasonably fresh install. Uh, six point nine. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No, six point eight nine, but yeah. yeah oh. Round up. Okay. Um, Rodney, the, uh, uh, it's a start. How soon do you have to go? I don't know. Okay. Uh, you no, you. I meant you said you have to maybe a call to disappear to, but uh, yeah, here's some facts to work with. When, when the other phone rings, <laughs> okay. Alrighty then, and I see a few more pasted messages. Did you get that? Yeah, this is this is some interesting. I've got some things to read. Um, so my spinning disk pool is still running, running, there. running. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm <laughs> concerned about. I probably. I, I have no idea how long this command is going to take to run on this pool. Well, if you had a special allocation class for metadata, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, well, this is progress in so far as I'm not going to care it, about empty. The value. interesting thing is on my side, please. the... Like I said, I, I get an estimated time, so it tells me how long it's going to take, but I don't get the metadata total. total. So it looks like the uh, two divergent code bases, the output's divergent too. That is possible, and that is very good to know. No, I'm not knocking it. My but, message is yeah. too long to send. Hmm. I, I, I can verify that on Linux, I do not get metadata totals. Um, um, is that a Linux difference or is that a version difference? I'm, I've run it on three different OpenZFS versions on Which Linux. Which version? The last one's too late. Uh, actually, that one's still running. It's got 22 minutes left to finish. <laughs> Goodness. I'm, I love, because, love those uh, estimates. It, on, on a box still running 13, it's uh, failing with mem some error or okay, some function pointers return zero, whatever. 
There's the uh, Z pool status on my pool that I'm dealing with. What? Okay. On on two one two dot one dot five on Linux, I do not get a metadata total. The other one's an older one that's gonna spin for another twenty minutes. Two dot one dot five was the version. Yeah. Okay. And that was running off of. 15 terabyte NVMe drive. Cool. Well, that's a darn good start. The Go particular ahead. machine I'm on is running a older version of an, an older instance of a Lumos, so it could be a version related thing. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't tested it on anything current. Should that command work on Linux machines? That That's why I paste it that no such file error there. That's, oh, interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm seeing when I run that command. ZDB may not be in, I'm not sure if it would be, in, I mean, it's going to be a distro dependent things, but it may not be included because uh, it, it is a separate package, right? Yeah, well, it, it could be a separate package. It, it's there. It's saying that the, when I pass the uh, the pool to it, it says no such file or directory. You, can you drop in your syntax that worked? Uh, yeah, it's like, Awesome. Thanks. I didn't tee it out, so I just it was literally ZDB dash cap P BBB and then my full name. Oh, well, try it without T. There you go. Uh -oh. Yeah, all the all the T's doing is saving it into a file while it outputs to the screen. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 14, I still don't from reading minutes. the man page. I don't understand the triple B because it B is a single option that you list. So I don't. B just make doing B multiple times just makes it more verbose. So it throws more crap out. in the manual page. Nothing oh, well, was, in the uh, page about that. I was going to facetiously uh, assert that it's it's an intensifier. More B's, more intense, and uh, oh. it seems like that is actually the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, more bees, more verbose. Uh, but it, it's not in the man page, you said? It's not in the man page I'm looking at. Okay, would you mind um, linking it? Or sorry, was it a man page uh, on your system or a man page um, linked out if possible? It's on my check. system. Oh. Okay. Oh, let, me, uh, let me check on mine. What uh, OS are you running? Okay. Um, this is uh, uh, Ubuntu 2204. Okay. Hmm. I'll check on uh, FreeBSD 14, see if it's in there. I got one B. Um, while on my machine, the man page doesn't list it on, on the Illumos side, it is listed in the help for the command itself. Hmm. CDB tag H. Yes. And it's, it's the last line, specify an option more than once example dash bb to make only that option verbose oh yep yeah, yep yeah. same on freebsd so man zdb uh no uh zdb space tech h mm. what again yeah, or dash h. Also, Sorry. Dash oh, oh thank you that, uh, that's also true on ubuntu 2204 well there you go <laughs> Infected by my coworkers, they say "tack" for some esoteric reason that I'm sure is oh, well founded. Okay. ZDB. Okay, not good. Thank you. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's not just me then. Either brain uh, muscle memory there. Yeah, thank you. No, uh, that, uh, yeah. And let me jump into a console. Ah. Oh. Ah. Uh. I will give you. I like this convention. This should be a, a a more widely used convention of I want thing more intense. I'm going to put the flag in more. It's not a completely unheard of convention. I mean, I've well, seen it in other the, programs. Uh, it's not that uncommon. For example, you can do the same with SSH and SSHD. Yeah, there's for, lots for of both logging. Two, two one nine. Oh yeah, that's right. 219 on FreeBSD for my OpenSense doesn't do it either. What was that number again to what nine? 2.1.9. Okay, thank you. On FreeBSD and in 
LPN sense. That's uh, uh, weird. Okay. So I don't think we want to wait for the results of this command. Oh, well, there's next week. <laughs> That's valid. That's why I use T. Three hours to go. Okay, great. Well, then um, other topics while everyone is slowly watching their ZDB command collect metadata. Greg, Mark, Dan, anything? Um, no, not specifically today. I'm just wondering why that ZDB command isn't fine in my, uh, my pool. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Just mess around. I'll figure it out eventually. But... Um, that, yeah. I'm also yeah. able to duplicate that. Can't find the pool on um, my 14.0 .0 system. Uh, 14.0 oh, FreeBSD? Yep. Uh, this okay. is on Linux, okay. too. Should it matter? Yeah. Yeah, that's the question. Is Let's identify when that's a thing. Um, Could there be some stupid Unicode uh, joining space or non-separating space issue or I, something? Copy you need paste to run it, it as root? No, I typed it as myself, yes. and I am root, yeah. Oh, okay. You have to be uh, privileged to uh, debug the pool. Does it? Because... Like, all the other commands work. I'll just, like... Here, I'll paste this. Uh, um, and if yeah, I the type... P in there? I don't see the capital P. The capital oh, P shouldn't matter. Oh, shouldn't matter? No, the cap yeah, oh, the parsable, capital... yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just, just yeah I tried a few different versions. The, um, I wonder if Linux is somehow... If ZDB is expecting like the full dev path or something weird like that. Uh, I tried the full path, but not the dev path. I'll give that a shot. Uh, yeah, I am actually seeing that on 14. Weird. Okay, now we're talking. Huh. Fascinating. So now I'm curious, uh, where is it working, given that it's not working for so many of us? I'm glad it wasn't just me. I was yeah. starting to wonder if my system was broken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who has it working? Show of hands. Stu, you had it working on, on Linux with that syntax and simply privileged ex execution, right? Correct. Okay. Rocks on 14.1 as well. Uh, yeah, it did have that. Uh, Jan, just drop in your syntax just to be safe if you can. Thank you. I'll just put works on Linux. Well, on a Linux. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, oh, then I'm doing it wrong because I'm on your name dash A. I'm on 14.1 release. I, I, I okay. Uh, then Richard, what's your syntax on? Uh, on 14, yeah, 14. I, I just used the command as you guys posted it. I, my pool name is zroot because it's a, okay. it's a, that's, it's a default press install. Yeah. So that's so crazy. What are the odds that we'd have the same pool name? <laughs> In FreeBSD <laughs> land, it's like, yeah, if of... it's called zroot, it's probably pretty high. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's okay. I'll be original. I'll call mine tank. Nobody's going to do that one. Dozer? Dozer, exactly. Trinity. Okay, okay Oracle. Okay. <laughs> that goes all the way back to Sun, predates Oracle. True. But all the do all the Oracle documentation has the tank in it. So. Yeah, fair enough. Only okay. because they inherited it. Well, yeah. Why would Oracle like, invent so unlike them to just like rip off one of the subsidiaries wholesale like that? It's... Get a room. I'm kidding. Okay. That said, <laughs> um, Mark, have you had a chance to speak? Can you have anything to share or ask? Same with Dan L. I'm good. Nothing new here. 
So that said, uh, Daniel, it, I know last week was pretty quiet, but did you do anything? Uh, I have a lot of exciting things to report. Please do. Um, okay, I'll stick to just ZFS. So uh, BSD can, I went to uh, Birds of Feather and a bunch of uh, ZFS talks. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I'm going to have to, like, start, like, watching PRs on the ZFS repo, which, which maybe we're all, are we all supposed to be doing that? I don't know. Of course. But there's all kinds of great things coming. So um, a, a, big, a big one that really caught my eye in a lightning talk was uh, uh, you could do rate limits. Um, so the PR is already in there, so that will be coming in, uh, you know, uh, coming to a module near you, I don't know, maybe in, in several months. But uh, you can set all kinds of different rate limits, read, write, and so on, um, which imagine how cool that would be for running a ton of containers, like jails and VMs and stuff. Um, so that's that's really exciting. So that is, that's available to be built today. Um, and I was also thinking there could be some interesting applications for... Uh, for replication, for uh, you know, for, for I mean, I don't know if it works this way. I have to dig in so the code and start testing it. But that was something that was pretty exciting. Um, yeah, and then and then the other thing that that I found really interesting is uh, is user space EFS. And you might be wondering, well, why would I want why would I want that? But uh, like if you have, um, uh, if you have, you can obviously separate your ZFS operations, like your receive operation from any kernel activity. So essentially you could create what would be the absolute most perfect safe backup that ever had existed. Yeah, I guess the, the... What, who is it? Uh, rsync.nets of the world claim to be ingesting ZFS streams, but wow, that gets uh, more scary the more you think about it in detail. Yeah, um, right. I mean, you could you can put a bomb in anything, and if, yeah. if you like, if you don't really trust your senders, um, you know that's. I mean, not, that's it's not necessarily true in any of our work uh, work environments, but. I don't know. Like I've always had this fantasy where you could, you could deliver, uh, Docker style, um, applications using using ZFS, and then you could have, like, a diff between, an nginx server and like an appliance, and then and then just send the snapshot diffs between, between yep. different things. But that, but I don't know. The Docker model, it's just not safe, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be safe in ZFS either. So there would have to be some sort of third-party signing CI/CD protection, and so on. But um, but at least the backup problem could be solved with the user space version, where you know you can do the receive and it doesn't make any impact on anything happening in the uh, the kernel, and it's in a you know it's in a Z ball that you know then have an extra layer of protection, and so on. So that was that was a feature that I found really really exciting. So do you uh, use CUs on OpenBSD and then, well, they're not super file system performance concerns, so you get everything per everyone's goals. Ha -ha. Oh, How are you welcome? That's even worse than my fun of combining <laughs> with an NFS server. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, you have to use DKMS version in, uh, in a lot of Linuxes, which seems to work pretty well. Um, but yeah, obviously user space, you know, your headroom's gonna, gonna vary a lot. Um, but yeah, so that's. How'd your talk go? So and what was so, it about? Oh, how did my talk go? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I did a, I did my talk on, uh, on Delta and my approach to sort of my opinionated approach to uh, to prioritizing safety and, you know, feature completeness between, between, uh, replicas. And I think, I think that what was really useful about giving the talk there and then arguing with people like way more steeped in ZFS than I am 
is figuring out exactly where sort of my idea and my biases fit in. Um, because I think, I think regardless of what happens upstream with CFS, there'll always be a need for some tiny tool and that is ultra portable and can help assess two different pools and, and make sure that you're replicating the best way between two systems. For example, NetBSD has dash capital L for large blocks, but doesn't have dash lowercase c. So if you have a so if you want to make a safe replica, you better be a really experienced admin to get the stuff from one system to another. Otherwise, you know, it's it's not going to work and it's going to cause all kinds of headaches. And unlike a developer, since we're some of us are production users here, or you know, part-time developers, I I have to run into total chaos. You know, I have to deal with all kinds of different systems and datos and IXs and junk somebody hauled off the back of the truck and make sure it replicates. So having a tool that helps manage with that, I think is and that, that's ultra portable, no dependencies. I think that's a space that uh, you know that can have some legs. Of course, those aren't the features that I'm <laughs> super focused on in Celta so far, but now I know now I know which direction I'm going. So, um, so that was that was really useful. Jan, what you got? There is another use case for user space ZFS, okay. and that is um, to have a hypervisor interface with the guest storage so that you could have ZFS user space on FreeBSD potentially jailed, uh, and maybe because it has to, such a simple interaction with uh, devices because it opens them and then it reads and writes them. So it wouldn't be hard to capsicumize that probably. Hmm. And then you could have the host uh, securely modifying um, the guest file system while the guest is stopped without having to import it. So it wouldn't be a performance question, but an isolation question, but you don't want the host kernel to import your potentially experimental ZFS version from the guest, or maybe a newer version because you're running Making, uh, an older release on your production hypervisors, but okay. your guests may be used for ZFS uh, file system development or just for hacking on current. Ooh, then you speaking of which. Once you have the, um, the pools created with the latest versions and make use of features, the old Z, uh, host ZFS kernel module, cannot even read, uh, you can't import the pool, not even read only. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Daniel, so did you see Rob Norris's talk? Getting a ahead, yeah. Or getting a data set out of a pool you can't read if the data set doesn't make use of that feature so that you can at least send yourself a replication stream if you accidentally uh, ran the pool upgrade and then uh, found out later that you had a system which does not support that. I look forward right. to your proof of concept. Go ahead. Was it Andrew? Michael, you, you said uh, qu you, the quiz talk. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, that's that might be a topic more for tomorrow. But uh, True, but it's but also his motivation is ZFS development. Is ZFS. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. You, Jan. Yep. Uh, do you want to uh, describe yeah. it or shall I? I mean, you might you might know. So he gave me a private private talk at the after party and there were, there's alcohol involved, but my understanding, it is a beehive that is a candle in the wind to, to do rapid module testing. Um, uh, yeah, for uh, specifically designed for uh, for ZFS on FreeBSD. But Michael, uh, you can clarify. Uh, so he's doing ZFS development and uh, he naturally really doesn't like his whole development environment crashing when he bumps into a bug when being loose. Oh, his his context was just exploratory development. He wants to be real loose and goosey and just explore new territory and then tighten up. So he does run the risk of panics. And so what he's done on both Linux and FreeBSD is to uh, basically strip down the hypervisor to being like a forward process so that almost transparently on the command line, he just launches a VM with his new code and his newly built kernel module and can control C it to exit and do check out the talk when it comes up in a week or so. It was 
quite cool and it was just a perfect harmony of the file system and the hypervisor so and these are great values. yeah um... <laughs> you so disagree the idea is that you basically treat a virtual machine as a process and thereby the virtual storage as an executable and then can run it redirect its standard in and out uh, if it crashes it crashes then that's yep. it and just it like any start other quickly uh, simple application and be basically suitable for uh, easy integration with development workflows yep and square so, yeah, and it'll survive for about five seconds, which is exactly as long as you need to tell before it's going to panic. Move on to the next one. Yeah, I will try to find that talk link, which shouldn't be too hard. I should know this. Um, this... Uh, go ahead. That kind of thing is what the SEL4 guys have been using for their um, device driver development stuff. Oh. They'll basically just run the, the Linux kernel as a... Uh, user mode process for and to bring in all of the Linux device drivers. Do you have a link for that? Yes, but it's similar but very different as well because this is using hardware assisted virtualization so that instead of um, monolithic kernel running as a process on a micro kernel, okay. that is different because you're modifying a lot less of the software. So you're having higher fidelity when you're debugging the uh, virtual kernel. Cool. Uh, oh, only a, I don't love that quotation. So I've been watching the chat here, and there's like thousands upon thousands of hours. That's cool. 12,000 hours later. Uh, OK, well, so not that everyone here is a developer, but that was quite cool. Dan L, did you catch that talk? And do you have any observations? I thought it was quite what? Which talk, sorry? And Rob Norris's talk on uh, quiz, the user space, uh, both kind of hypervisor and kernel and ZFS all at once, all the things. Mm -hmm. No. It was, it was cool. I'll just say that. I'm trying to find a link. I have to wait for the video. So he did two it really was a live talks. stream, but I don't know if you can still access uh, the um, right. The, only Dev Summit, but the team is diligently getting it up there. Yeah, I I missed his first talk. What was that about, Daniel? Oops, squash, squash. Uh, what was his first talk about? Um, talks Friday. Ooh. Daniel, did we lose you? Oh, you muted. Maybe a call came in. Okay, anyway, I will try to find that, but good good stuff. And uh, he's gone from Linux developer to FreeBSD developer in a very short amount of time, and he's just extremely pragmatic. I love that. Uh, Welcome to the dark side. Yeah, he's an MVP to watch, I think. Oh, his first talk, uh, why F-Sync on OpenZFS can't fail. Yeah, that was a great one in... Uh, I pay. Hopefully that will see the light of day in our lifetimes. Uh, he did it BSD can also. Yeah. So yeah, I missed it this time, this round for a conflict, but yeah, his other talk. Do you have any highlights from that to share? Uh, no, it was over my head. Uh, the important part uh, I yes, took Jan. from it is yes. that um, if you set um, the pen, basically what the CDL to decide what should happen on errors and to continue. Um, if you already have basically, for example, an F stud or some other, uh, sorry, an F sync or some other uninterruptible must not fail IO uh, queued, it will still hang just the rest afterward continues. So as uh, because F sync on ZFS is effectively returns void so uh, it does not fail the function signature says so okay. um, okay. your options are either to make progress or not or panic mm, cool so yeah okay um, um, i found links to the talk description and the repo so i put those in chat go for it and in the doc I think you list, uh, yeah, oh yeah, the first talk is eight, number 18, but 24 is his other talk. Okay. 
Uh, cool. And that's the F sync talk. Yep. Cool. I see he submitted those in reverse order. That's cool. Anyway, well, uh, there's various homework. Rodney, if you're still around, let me check the thing. You're still around. Okay. Um, I hope that helps. Other topics, questions, and you name it. Or Daniel, how was say I don't know the rest of the conference? Any good? Dan, other Dan, any comments on that little event? That humble, awesome event. Uh, there was tragic news. Mike Carls, who was very present and very much there a few days ago, passed away on the way home. So our community is kind of uh, uh, recoiling from that. But we'll try to stay positive here. Some some people may not realize who Mike Carls was to BSD. Um, I watched his video that was posted and from what I can tell, he did a lot of work on the early TCPIP stack, didn't he? He's he worked with Van Jacobson on the original internet congestion collapse that happened in the early eighties, eighty five. Yep. Yep. Stuff. I remember that in in the talk I watched last night. And he has been working on BSD Unix, as far as I know since about 84 it sounds about continuously right. yeah non-stop so we're talking about 50 years yep um and he's um he was actively involved in the ietf arena though i could i don't know that his names are listed as authors of any drafts but 40 he, years michael he is sorry i'm, I'm repeatedly thanked and cited as a contributor to the work just yeah. throughout it going all the way back to three digit rfcs um involved in tcp and the internet for so long mk15 is an assigned number by rfc 950. mk15 yeah mike what carl is... oh that was a, it was an it was uh, initials and a, a set of numbers were frequently oh, my used. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. Were frequently used in the early days of the internet to annotate um, who people were. Hmm. Uh, this, this, this goes back. I mean, this is the assigned numbers draft. This goes back to when the internet was so small, the numbers, all of the IP addresses were list, listed in a single document, RFC 950, if I, I think that's the right number. And, and um, yeah. This, this is a, um, Mike was one of the giants that all of us stand on their shoulders. Um, RFC 950, I think is, no, that's RFC 950 is subnetting procedure, which Mike is not an author of, but is a contributor to. Um, uh, seven ninety. Oh. oh yeah that's hitting us so. anyway uh apparently his bsd what 80 minute bsd can talk story time from last year is quite good uh bsd can be too much he's like i don't think anyone's gonna care about this but then it it was awesome. So uh, May 2023, for what it's worth here is this may be interesting. I, I watched that talk last night. I, oh, I, that was, okay. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think this is it worth a watch. Of course, everything auto plays. Watch. 
Okay. Hmm. Oh, someone just dropped it in there, and yes, that looks like the same one. Thank you. You probably beat me to it. Okay, other kind words, observations, questions. Could I um could I bother you to drop the uh, Google Docs link in the Zoom chat? I came in through the Discord and they didn't have the page listed, Done. just the Zoom link. Yes. Done. Well, that's a lot. Thank you. Talk. Of course. Ah. Okay, well, uh, if not obvious, BSD Ken was fantastic. I hope everyone had a great time. It was an honor to be part of organizing it. Got me badge back there. And uh, thank you, everyone, who helped make that happen. Let's see. 2108 UTC. Anything else, gang? Well, I invite you to have a great week and like and subscribe. Thanks. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Really enjoyed being here. Hey, Got it. great to have Got you. It. Oh, so actually, I re-enabled that. Um, that We're still recording. recording. We are, but yep. if it's news, we often have the best stuff right after we stop recording. So, yeah, let's say it. Oh, uh, yeah, this is not that important. Uh, okay. Just, uh, nope, still the same. Never mind. Okay, okay the kernel Keep module watching out, but... being loaded. I was okay. waiting for the reboot to finish up. No worries. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Um, wait Take a care. second. Yeah, do tell. My, my um, multi hour run now says it should take less than a minute remaining. Oh, sure. I'll wait. The Z, uh, ZDBPP. Hmm. Does anything odd need to be loaded? Because I tried it on 14 and I got that same error. Others were getting of like, hey, not found. Uh, Could be a regression 2.2.0, which got fixed you... before 2.2.4. Oh, I am. Oh, they had those issues. I'm squarely on the Dotto release just for a point of, single point of reference, fixed point of reference. And so maybe That's... that is indeed not quite there. Do you have a zpool.cache file in Etsy CFS? Uh, let's see. I do not. Yeah, neither do I. I'm wondering if that's hmm. the that's what's causing the issue. Hmm. So, if that directory is uh, mounted writable at all, uh, you could just create a one gigabyte file create create a file back Z a pool and, and destroy it, that should uh, regenerate that missing file. Hmm. Because yeah. the kernel should write it every time the um, a pool is imported or exported and the easiest way to have a pool to import or export is to just use a one gig file. It doesn't even have to be fakely uh, provision just truncate dash S1G. Take care, Santi. Uh, oh, have something? A, a ZEB dash single B on my big pool says it's going to take some 40 hours to run. Yeah, but it told me it would take 3,000 hours and it should be done now in 15 seconds. Oh, the estimates are always like, a, I assume, like a resilver or a scrub. The initial estimates are pretty terrible, especially resilver, I'm trying to say. Just saying. It got better once they implemented something slightly more intelligent than just reading all blocks uh, in transaction order. Um, order, so it effectively doing random I/O on an old enough pool. Okay. Um, so is your fifteen seconds still fifteen seconds? Yeah, it's down to ten now. Ten seconds. That's a long ten seconds. Yeah, it is. As I cool. said, it's yep. Microsoft minutes and seconds and days and hours and years and so on. He's very, very close to a black hole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, 
yeah. time will continue to warp. Okay, now it's at zero, but it's still running. <laughs> Uh, interesting maybe it now has to the check maybe it's now compute bound yeah, the closer you get to the singularity the slower time passes yeah. can you ever yeah uh, guess i have to pick the right coordinate system so that i can pass through the uh schwarzschild um, limit because the, that at least is only singularity if you pick the wrong coordinate system. So try zdb dash e dash a pool name then dash b perhaps. Yes. Okay. I found it on a topic box post and now it's working on my machine. Uh, 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 it's running, 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 and still running, I guess. And now it's finished. Uh, the root. So I the total that. metadata percentage is down to, on a big pool with lots of big files, is down to um, 0 0.07%, I see. It. But that's a pool which contains lots and lots of big files on, which were written once with 60 megabyte block size. Okay, so under 1%? Yeah, far under 1%, 0.07%. Uh, lucky you. But uh, again, I have to say that's basically a, um, a data graph here pool where <laughs> okay. just for archival use. Uh, Rodney, are you uh, enabling a time, which will throw in a little metadata all the time? Potentially, no, no, a time's okay. turned off. A relative a time is on. This is a Linux pool. So, to whom it may concern, I needed uh, about the zdb dash e, then the pool, then the b, 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 p, b, b, and all that. So, just saying. Uh, and Greg, let me know if that helps you. Um, I'm a little hesitant to stop the one that's running now. Fair, oh, we I, got something to run. I couldn't get that far. Yeah, no, I, I pasted that up a little further in your notes there, what the fix was. It turns out that it's a true NAS thing. They didn't recompile it to point it to where the cache file is. So you have to pass that along. with. Oh, okay. So different. Greg needed it, a cache file. Yeah. You've already typed it. It's it's up above a little oh, bit. Oh, it is? Yeah. Got but, it. Yeah. If I can type. Okay, and thank you, uh, Richard, for uh, Rob's at least lie. Whoa, is that it? No, it's not it. What's going on here? Uh, Rob slides from LinkedIn on the call topic, on the talk topic, as I attempt to multitask here. Okay. So the pool I looked at has 99.93% uh, ZFS level zero plane file. So yeah, it's probably far from um, representative of your average pool. Okay. Well, good to know. So Rodney, I hope that helps you. And we look forward to your tales of celebration. Okay, slam that like button, slam that subscribe button. Thank you, everyone. Don't forget about your Patreon. Got to work on that. Actually, I did set one up, but I haven't like put anything on it. I don't know. Yeah. Is that something you'd be interested in supporting? Your your zdb dash ez root. Um, for whatever reason, maybe the position doesn't matter, but I get output from that. My guy. Um, and an estimate. Is Z root the name of your pool? It is in this case. I made it from Boss, which is for build option survey. So yeah, Z root just. Uh, so what what value did you put at source? Ah. Uh, you should really not put spaces in the middle of those things like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
fine. Uh, Why is the source? What's the value of source on the end? No, oh, that's a link. Source. Oh, this is that's the link to your source of your information. Linkless. So you don't specify. Oh. You just say you just say it's an exported pool. All right, hmm. Here. Uh, no, I let's still get a can open. Oh, you do well. Mm. That's right off the screen. My pool name, boss. I'll take it. So, anyway, I think you got your options maybe in wrong order. I, this is I ran it. I copied it, and it gave me the estimate. And then what's it say? That's not with like looking for metadata. That's just me trying to get the command to work. So that I'm just kind of giving the reader hopefully some nudge in the right direction. So third one's a charm. Let's call it there. I can wait a few minutes for those who want to talk. And thank you, everyone. Finally thank found you. the information I was looking for. Not end. Let me start. What did you find? Uh, Andrew, you mentioned the SEL4. Oh, you brought a link in. Oh, this is good. OK. The second one specifically where they're talking about some of the driver stuff they were messing with. OK. Um, uh, and Ruth, we're still recording just because, hey, it keeps giving. I, I mean, this is a, definitely obscure enough that it's beyond the scope of <laughs> what probably needs to be recorded. Uh, true, but I, I, I only have got what I've got. Uh, anyway, it's all, oh, God, it's the worst keyboard ever. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Control K now auto link so I like that. Then that's uh, uh, I'm gonna play with it some more once I get my home lab set up. The charm. Okay, thank you everyone. I'm gonna stop recording.